Hi there, my name is Emma. Thank you so much for selecting this video today. So you are joining me for a positive birth preparation taster session. So I'm hoping you're gonna find this video really useful in helping you to select an antenatal course that is right for both yourself and your birth partner. So just wanting to introduce myself a little bit more formally first. Um, so I live um, in Dorset. I work with uh, women and their birth partners primarily in this area of the country, but I have done online hypnobirthing courses with um, women up and down the country. So yeah, uh, far and wide, um, right up into Scotland in fact. So yeah, but primarily here in Dorset. So just talking a little bit about my background. So probably the majority of my working life, I was in the veterinary industry. So I trained as a veterinary nurse, so nursed for a long time, but also worked within sales in the veterinary industry as well. So sometimes through my antenatal courses, you find that I will draw on my veterinary knowledge. Um, we are animals, um, if we're honest with ourselves. So um, it's all linked and relatable. So yeah, I do, I do touch on my veterinary knowledge uh, a fair amount. I have also got several fitness qualifications. So alongside the hypnobirthing courses that I teach, I also work with pre and postnatal women with fitness, so both classes and personal training. So I've got a huge passion for supporting our bodies during this important time of our life. Um, of course, when we're pregnant, it's a normal physiological thing to be going through, but it does take its toll on the body. So there's lots of things that we can do to be really supportive um, just to help the journey to be as positive as possible. So I've got two children, two daughters. Um, at the time of recording this, one is five and the other is two and a half. Um, so I opted to be a hypnobirthing teacher because of my own birth experiences. So I use the technique for both of my births and uh, my birth journeys couldn't be further removed from one another really. So with my eldest, I developed preeclampsia at 36 weeks gestation. Um, it was a bit of a shock for both my husband and myself. Um, so I just went in feeling a bit unwell um, and was diagnosed. So I had to have um, in, an induction on that day. Um, so the birth couldn't be further removed from what I'd hoped. Um, very medicalized, wasn't able to be as mobile as I'd hoped and things like that. So um, yeah, very, very different to, to my birth planning really. But nonetheless, my husband and I drew on hypnobirthing techniques and worked through our birth as a team. And I still look back at that birth in a really positive way despite sort of the emergency scenario that we were in. And then with my second, um, I had a home birth and it was incredible. And if I could do it again uh, today, I would, and I really mean that. Um, it was still intense, uh, very powerful, but um, just incredible. And I enjoyed the sensations that I was feeling. And again, my husband and I, work through that birth together and yeah, just amazing. And I feel that every um, birthing family, uh, whatever your scenario is, you deserve a, a positive experience. There's no doubt that birth navigates several twists and turns and every family that I work with will have a different story to tell. But the thing with hypnobirthing is that it always helps, it always, always helps. So yeah, so that's why I do it. It's a real heartfelt passion and desire to help um, move away from this media-driven fear of birth that we're living in to creating this excitement and empowerment with, with birth. We, we all deserve that. So what is hypnobirthing then? So the name sometimes puts people off a little bit. We obviously draw on some hypnotherapy techniques within um, hypnobirthing, but it really is just um, powerful language. So a hypnobirthing course will use guided relaxation and we'll try one of those today, but it is just positive language, trying to retrain our subconscious mind into not fearing birth and trying to remove these 
ideas that birth is is a real challenge something that we need to endure um to sort of considering birth is something that is really positive that you can have some control of and yeah um to empower you to to really take ownership of your own individual journey so we use the scripts we use breathing techniques we sort of introduce different methods to um, learn to relax whether that's thinking about aromatherapy or uh, massage therapy lots of different things there so yes we do draw on on those things um but also hypnobirthing gives you a really sound and comprehensive antenatal education as well and for me knowledge is power the more you know about this subject the more understanding you've got of what your body is doing and how you can support it the more likely you're going to have a positive experience so a lot of people consider hypnobirthing as just an addition to a traditional antenatal course but in fact it really does give you uh, everything that you need to prepare for your birth and also with my course I help you um, with early parenthood as well. So we don't need to be worried about this name, hypnobirthing. It is just, um, it's just an antenatal course, um, but with a really positive outlook. Um, so I wanna talk about um, the science really that underpins hypnobirthing. So if you're still feeling a little bit skeptical, um, then this will tell you what it is we're trying to achieve with all of these different relaxation techniques. So, if we think of our body, we have our central nervous system. And our central nervous system is extremely clever. And it's something that we've not evolved away from. We've still got these innate instincts that have been with the human species forever. As I sit here now, I've got lots of tech and things surrounding me. So we consider ourselves to be really evolved. But there's these elements of our, um, our body and our mind that that just exist and we yeah, have not moved away from them. So the central nervous system then. So we have sort of two elements of our central nervous system, just to simplify things. So we've got our sympathetic nervous system and our parasympathetic nervous system. So if we were to go back to um, sort of the caveman type era, um, our sympathetic nervous system would be um, what we would draw on in times of being preyed upon or um, maybe in times of fighting with um, a, a, another group of people or whatever it is. So if we were out hunting and we spotted a saber-toothed tiger, we would have a dump of adrenaline in our body. And it's this side of our central nervous system. It's our freeze, fight, flight zone. So some of you will be familiar with that language, freeze, fight, and flight. So it's a really useful system. Um, it's very helpful, uh, but we only wanna be in this system when we need to be there. So if we spotted this saber-toothed tiger, we'd have this dump of adrenaline. And what adrenaline does, we know the symptoms when we're afraid of something, if it's an exam or a first date, we'd get the elevated heart rate, uh, maybe sort of clammy hands. Um, we might have diarrhea because our body doesn't want to be dealing with our bowels, so we'll get rid of that. Um, and what happens is the body will draw blood away from your vital organs, obviously not all of it, but it will draw blood away to your legs and arms so that you are able to either fight this animal or run away from it. Um, so that is our sympathetic nervous system um, in a very simplified way. So adrenaline, also cortisol will be here as well, so one of our stress hormones. And then the other side of the fence is our parasympathetic nervous system. And this is our state of calm. So when we are very relaxed and at peace, we're not feeling threatened in any way, um, we have hormones like serotonin, oxytocin running through our body, beta endorphins. So this is when we're calm and relaxed. So if we draw it to modern times, sadly we spend quite a lot of our time 
in the sympathetic zone. There's a lot more threats in the modern world, maybe not saber-toothed tigers, but there's a lot of things going on. Hectic lifestyles, busy work demands, trying to juggle motherhood and work life, that's very much me. Um, money worry, social media, gosh. Um, lots of things will mean that we've got adrenaline and cortisol firing for a, a large proportion of the time. We want to try and learn to relax. So this is day to day, not just in our birthing situation. Uh, we need to start finding ways to soothe and calm our central nervous system. So when we think about birth, most of us, when we become pregnant, are very quick to become fearful about that day when we have to birth our baby. It's the media that's done it. Um, when we see birth in the media, it's always very dramatic. Um, we hear a lot of negative birth stories floating around. Um, even the word contraction will fire up a lot of um, negative ideas. Um, so because we've got this fear of birth, when we are going into our birthing situation, we, we are often in the sympathetic zone of our central nervous system. So we're birthing with adrenaline absolutely coursing through our veins, and this is not ideal for a positive and smooth birth. Every single contraction that we have when we're labouring is driven by oxytocin and oxytocin is one of the hormones that is present when we are in the parasympathetic zone okay so each one ooh, each one of these contractions that we experience is oxytocin driven so if we are very fearful and adrenaline is in charge it keeps dampening down our levels of oxytocin so we need to find ways that we can be in our parasympathetic zone keeping adrenaline and cortisol at bay having oxytocin high and flowing to support each and every one of these contractions so that they can be efficient and effective and that your birth and your labor will progress in the way that nature wants it to also, in the parasympathetic state, we'll have beta endorphins, and that is our body's natural pain relievers. So we would have that flowing through our veins as well. So often, a lot of women that really get into the zone with their hypnobirthing and are really calm during their labour will describe labour as something that's not painful. Um, and for so many people, they just cannot consider birth to be pain free um, but it can be um, what I want to clarify is that hypnobirthing doesn't strive for this perfect birth I think sometimes when we think about hypnobirthing we visualize a home birth in the water no pain relief no noise and sometimes it is that sometimes it is but for other women, um, they are still in a clinical setting. Um, they might still be reaching for gas and air and things like that. They might still be being very vocal, which for me is a, is a, can be a really positive thing to be vocal when you're laboring. Um, so it's not striving for perfection. What it strives for is supporting the body in what it needs to do. We want you to be in your parasympathetic zone, calm, relaxed, supporting the flow of oxytocin, keeping the blood flow to your uterus and your baby really strong. I don't want your body to think that it needs to run away or fight labour. That is just not what we need. And a lot of the negative scenarios that we hear with birth is driven by the fact that women will go into their labour situation in the sympathetic zone. Things just cannot progress in the way that they need to. So that is the science of what we're trying to, to achieve, making you feel calm and relaxed. So again, just to reiterate, you're going to have so much knowledge to support this, which is only going to help you to feel calm, confident and in control of your labour situation. So I hope that that makes a bit of sense. Um, what I want to do now, just before we talk about the content of the course and your course options, I just want to read you a nice birth um, story. So this is a story from a couple that I worked with 
at the beginning of the pandemic, so I've worked, um, my business is, is nearly three years old, so a big proportion of, of my running of the business has been during our, our global pandemic. So um, helping a lot of couples, uh, women and their birth partners through this quite challenging time to be pregnant and birthing their babies. So let's hear what they had to say then. So here we go. So it says, after hearing many horror stories of birth, I knew I wanted to do it differently when I fell pregnant. I looked into hypnobirthing, reading various books, and found Emma online. She was very accommodating um, and helped us to schedule sessions to suit us. I found the course to be fascinating, and it really helped me understand what goes on in your body during pregnancy and labour. The breathing techniques and relaxation tracks helped me to relax at home. My husband also felt a lot more involved in the pregnancy and we both felt really excited to welcome our new arrival. Due to COVID-19, I had to stop work a little earlier than I'd expected to. However, the silver lining was that myself and my husband got to spend some lovely time together at home on the build up to the birth. I was a lot more relaxed and can spend my days really focus on, focusing on this. I think this really helped as I started having contractions at 5am on my due date. My husband rang the hospital when the contractions were a certain time apart, but we were advised to stay at home a little longer. So I relaxed in the bath listening to my affirmations. My husband also used a stroking massage technique to help me through. However, it got to midday and I felt like I needed to go to hospital. So we drove to the hospital with my headphones in. When we arrived, it was a bit of a shock as my husband wasn't allowed into the maternity unit until I was in established labour. It turns out I was eight centimetres dilated and I was calling for him to come in and they agreed that he could. I used my breathing techniques along with gas and air and asked the midwife if I could use the birthing pool. I was in the pool for about an hour, but unfortunately baby's head got a bit stuck, so I did have to deliver on the bed. However, my husband said I was very true to my hypnobirthing techniques throughout. If I hadn't done the course with Emma, I really feel I would have been a lot less in control during the labour and a lot more fearful about what was happening to my body, especially being my first baby. I think my husband would also have not known what to do or what ways that they could help. It really helped us to approach birth and pregnancy as a team. I think also during these tough times, the techniques were even more needed. So I definitely recommend any expecting couples to do hypnobirthing. Thank you so much. So yeah, so just a really nice positive situation. And um, there's plenty more birth stories on my website. Um, and there's also loads of positive birth stuff out there as well, if you search for it. Um, stop watching One Bell on Every Minute and search out some positive births, because there is plenty out there. Um, you probably noticed from there um, a little bit of emphasis on the birth partner and that's really really important to me so I've worked with mums and daughters friends in their um, pregnant friends so yeah a, a friend supporting the birth obviously um, couples as well um, and the birth partners experience is really really important to me um, for some if they're sort of not sure um, in what ways that they can support or they've got no sort of foundation of knowledge about what to expect from birth, they could come away from birth feeling traumatised and I hear the language um, that I felt useless or um, I wasn't sure what to do. So this often crops up if I work with couples that are having a subsequent birth. So they may have had not the best experience with their first birth, so they reach for hypnobirthing with the second. Um, and often birth partners will describe themselves as feeling useless and I think that's so sad. Uh, so for me, um, pregnancy, birth, early parenthood is a team effort and um, my course puts quite a lot of emphasis on, on that and I'm proud of that. I want birth partners to, to have a really good experience. So the course then, as I've said, is comprehensive antenatal learning. So you'll learn about the physiology, what your uterus is doing, what your vagina does, um, you will learn ways to try and prevent tearing, care of your pelvic floor, something that I'm quite passionate about with my 
um, fitness kind of side of things there. You will learn all the hormones that are involved, the stages of labour, your options with regards to places to birth. Um, we talk about things like caesarean section and how you can have the most positive C-section um, that you can if that turns out to be what's right for your family. Um, talk about induction when it's clinically justified and also when you can decline um, induction. So we talk about the NHS, the protocols that are involved, why they're involved, um, and having an understanding of our care providers, who it is that's looking after us, the pressures that they're under. Um, but for me, some of the aim of hypnobirthing is to empower you to ensure that you are treated as an individual. So these protocols are put, put in place um, almost like a blanket really to treat either a high risk lady or a low risk lady. Um, and the protocols tend to be followed sort of to the letter, but we are quite within our rights to ask questions. Is that right for me? What if we say no? What are the risks and benefits? So it's this empowerment to, to take ownership. Um, and that's so, so important. Um, talk about um, caring for your newborn. So I think with my course, I don't necessarily demonstrate how to change a nappy, but what I do talk about is what to expect with infant sleep, so what is normal. Um, I talk about the fourth trimester, so this is the time when you've got this tiny newborn infant and sort of what to expect from their psychology. So um, knowing what's going on in their little brain and why it is that you go to lay them in their beautiful Moses basket and they've got no desire to sleep in there whatsoever. If you've got a little understanding of their psychology, it can help you understand these little challenges that we find. So we talk about baby wearing um, and those kind of things. So yeah, so the em emphasis with sort of my newborn care is for you to understand what to expect and what's normal. Um, talk about breastfeeding. So I'm a trained breastfeeding peer supporter. So the course will give you this lovely foundation of knowledge to help you start your breastfeeding journey and know um, that I'm here for support afterwards if you have any challenges and I will signpost you to the right person um, if we're noticing anything that's abnormal there. Um, so going through optimal birthing positions, gosh, it's all there. So you're gonna get a real comprehensive antenatal education. So hypnobirthing is not an add-on, um, it is the whole works and most hypnobirthing courses that are out there. Some of the online ones which is not sort of a face-to-face -face interaction with a real human don't go into all of those things but if you're looking for a course then most that you find out there will offer you a reasonably comprehensive um, antenatal course but with mine with the breastfeeding and everything in there um, I feel that it gives you everything that you need. So in terms of course options then so um, at the time of recording the options with my course is um, you can have a private face-to-face -face course so those courses work by me coming to your home. Um, I will come on four separate um, occasions and we'll work really closely together, um, working through the course content and sometimes tailoring for individual needs. So if you were having an elective caesarean and wanted to have hypnobirthing for that, then I can sort of chop and change and tailor things a little bit more. So my private courses are very, very popular, so I do a lot of those. Um, I also have an online private course as well. So if you are somewhere else in the country, um, I do it via Zoom. I deliver that course slightly differently. So if I went to your home, I'd spend about two and a half, three hours with you. I think that's a bit much on Zoom. So it's usually an hour and a half, two hours on Zoom. And then there's some pre-recorded elements and emails and things. So it is very much sort of a an online um, course, but it's really good. And I was forced to do it through some of the pandemic and I've had some really awesome results with it. So it's a great course. Um, and then I have my group face-to-face -face courses, which are uh, high-end, they are premium antenatal courses. So I run them in the Tarrant Valley, which is in Dorset, really accessible from Blamford, Wimborne, Poole, Shaftesbury, Stermanston Newton, Salisbury even. Um, and if you are far away and you think a weekend in Dorset, suit me. There's some lovely B&Bs and stuff in the area, some great restaurants and things. So the group courses are awesome. So again, you're going to get all the content from me 
but I also have some guest speakers at my group courses. So I have a midwife that comes along and um, for me her role is to clarify to you what the roles are of all of the people that are looking after you during your maternity care because I'm encouraging you to ask questions and take ownership and not challenge but if you feel that something doesn't feel quite right for you or you want to know your options it's knowing who to ask and if you're not getting the answer that you feel you should then maybe there's somebody else you can speak to so obstetricians um midwives sort of lead midwives, independent midwives, doulas, she's going to clarify what those roles are so you know who to um, turn to if you need. Um, she'll also be available for a question and answer sh session and I uh, sent her questions on um, several occasions and she's um, amazing and is really pro-positive uh, birth and individual choice so um, very much supports hypnobirthing and what it does for couples, so it's lovely to have her involved. Um, I'm also really passionate about care of your physical body. So I also have a th physiotherapist um, come along to the group sessions. So she's a women's health physio, so her role is to talk about um, how you can support your physical body. So a lot of focus on the pelvic floor and learning to connect with this area of your body, particularly on how to release those muscles during birth. Um, she'll also outline ways that you can um, try to prevent tearing um, and also she'll touch on what you can do in your postnatal phase as well um, to help your recovery. So yeah, an awesome course, um, over two days, so you can really indulge in your pregnancy um, and birth prep over these lovely two days. Meet some other couples, delicious lunch and refreshments. Um, yeah, and just a, a really lovely setting um, here in Dorset. Yeah, so those are your options. You obviously can find everything out on my website in terms of booking, dates, costs and things. I try and keep everything as up to date as I can um, on there. But obviously if you've got any questions, then, then let me know. So the hypnobirthing method that I teach is the Catherine Graves method. Okay, so I've trained in her technique. And the reason I trained in her technique is it is accredited by the Royal College of Midwives. So I tend to follow her course reasonably closely to how um, I was taught to, to teach it, but I do add in a few bits so that, you know, um, my fitness side of things and the breastfeeding are sort of additions to the course really. But it's her scripts that I use, um, so they're the ones that I read. So if you enrolled on the course, you will get a book and um, an MP3 download of relaxations that you can listen to at home. Um, so I read the scripts, I have written some of my own affirmations which I um, text out to couples once they've completed the course um, and the affirmations are just positive birth statements and um, they're ones that I've written myself and just a little text message here and there pings away and you just get this lovely positive statement. And there'll be 10, 15 of those and you can cherry pick the ones that you really like and then um, work with those um, on the lead up to your labour and during as well. So there we go, that's a little bit of a taster. So what have we talked about? I've introduced myself where I'm from and my skill set. Um, a little bit about what hypnobirthing is with hypnotherapy in there and it's not something that we need to be concerned about it's just a sensible approach to birth we talked about the central nervous system and that is the science that is what we're trying to <coughs> support excuse me um with these techniques getting you parasympathetic oxytocin in charge we then looked at what the course involves your course options um so we're just going to finish now with a relaxation so yeah, um, normally I pop some music on, so when we do these together, there'll always be the same piece of music. Uh, but with YouTube, you have to be a little bit careful. Um, so I'm just gonna read um, from Catherine's script. <coughs> so this is um, one of Catherine's scripts that she's written. So one that we would do in the course, but there's several, um, yeah, and I, I love all of them. Um, but this is just a nice um, introduction. So with guided relaxation, if you've never done it before, 
don't be worried, it's just words. So I'll ask that you close your eyes and relax. So it might be that you just want to lie down here or sit comfortably and whatever works for you. But it's fine if you feel the need to fidget or cough or um, you find your mind wandering. It's absolutely fine and really, really normal. Just try and draw your um, mind back to my voice. And in time, these things become a lot easier and it becomes a skill for life. And I know for me that um, ever since doing hypnobirthing, I've reach for guided relaxation and deep breathing and things just in, in other elements of my life, just to try and soothe my central nervous system. So a skill for life that you'll take away from this course as well. So I'm just gonna have a little slurp of water and then I'll read and we'll finish from that. Here we go. Just allow your breathing to slow down and deepen. So comfortable and so serene. As I speak, let your eyes close gently and easily so that you start to release serenely and confidently. Breathe comfortably, slowly and deeply. Allow your body to sink, deeply soothing, completely comfortable. Now let the softness in your eyelids spread outwards to your forehead so that it too becomes smooth and comfortable. Enjoy the feeling of comfort and well-being. Just pause for a short time and now allow the softness to spread naturally from your forehead to the bridge of your nose. Flow in and around your eyes and on downwards through your cheeks to your jaw and your neck. Everything releasing as the soothing comfort gently spreads. Now, allow your mouth to let go as well, so that it is entirely soft and comfortable, with your lips and eyes gently smiling. Feel your tongue releasing completely naturally in your mouth, so that now your whole face and head Feel calm and comfortable. Enjoy the feeling of comfort and well-being. Finally, allow your shoulders to release and sink to their natural level so that your whole body is calm, limp and serene and your breathing is soft and slow. I want you to imagine now that you are looking up at the sky. The sky is overcast with dark, heavy clouds. The clouds represent any worries that you may have about birth. Now a ray of bright sunlight penetrates the clouds, shining directly down onto you. You can feel its warmth and you remember that above the clouds all is sunshine, warmth and softness. In a moment I'm going to say the word soften. Are you ready? Soften. As you hear the gentle sound of the word soften you feel yourself rising gently higher and higher along the ray of sunshine, easily, lightly. Soften, soften. You hear the air rushing beside you and as you approach the clouds, the ray of sunshine protects you. And you rise through the clouds 
to the softness and light above the clouds. All the fear, negative ideas drop away. So soft, so warm, so safe, so comfortable. To a place of confidence, calm and comfort. Enjoy the experience of confidence, calm and comfort. And now you look down through the clouds, along that ray of sunshine, and see yourself with the sunshine shining on you. All the confidence, calm and comfort flow into your body and mind as you sit where you are now. Notice that as you see yourself, you feel confident, calm and comfortable. All is well. All is very well. Your subconscious mind has absorbed the confidence, calm and comfort permanently. And now that these changes have been made, float gently back into your body again as you sit there in this room, resting in the sure knowledge that this wonderful, calm relaxation is there when you give birth to your baby, so gently and naturally, filled with serenity and confidence. You realise that your body has been specially designed to give birth naturally, easily and comfortably. So you look forward to giving birth to your baby as the most wonderful and empowering experience, meeting your baby happily and calmly. And next time you will go even more deeply, easily and quickly into relaxation knowing how good it feels and how comfortable it is. Each time you hear the word soften, you are filled with confidence, calm and comfort. Now open your eyes, take your time, fully becoming aware of your surroundings, gently and calmly. There we go. So that was Catherine Graves' Soften Relaxation, um, part of the course that I teach and, and I believe that one is in the book as well. So you can read it to yourself or someone can read it to you um, once you've got that book. So yeah, so that concludes our taster session. Um, obviously, if you've got any questions, then let me know. Um, check out my website for course details, www.ebfitness.co.uk. Um, I'm also on social media, um, Facebook and Instagram. Please like the video if you enjoyed it, comment and check out the other content on my YouTube channel. Um, lots of useful stuff on there. Thank you so much for watching and um, I hope to see you on a course soon.